Studio number two. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Every time I give a tour, yeah. there's always one room that somebody just kind of feels at home in. Yeah. Sometimes it's this one, sometimes it's one, sometimes it's three. Yeah. But that's the beauty of this building, is it's warm and welcoming and you kind of find your vibe. So most of what we see in this room is this, a smaller string date than, than say we could do in Studio One, like up to you know, 15, 16 pieces, or rock and roll, drums, drums, drums. This is a beautiful drum room. It's a wonderful marriage between the live room, this desk. desk. So part of it is, yes, drums in the room sound amazing, and I have yet to have a drummer leave less giddy than when they show up. Yeah. They're always just happy to play in there because it sounds good, it feels good in there. Yeah. And it's married with this wonderful Neve 8028. A lot of people would, uh, you know, kill to have one or two channels of 1073. And here I'm spoiled, I've got 40. They all work. This is basically the same desk that Dave took from Sound City, right? Yeah, yeah, it's up at 606 now. And they were actually built in the barn right next to each other. Wow. Let's give credit where credit's due. Lawrence just murders keeping everything working. Our chief engineer, Lawrence Melchos, is a monster technician. He's, you know, he, he keeps the entire building running. He's just, he's a, he's a machine. He's awesome. A very talented songwriter as well, and a wonderful musician. That's right. Just did, just did some stuff in here, actually. Mm-hmm. So when uh, I was working in here, we would see everything from like brass, big percussion, even like some foley and stuff. Yeah. As we had mentioned for big rock acts. But uh, aside from like the big stuff that's happened in the past, you know, since it's been East West, mm -hmm. what are some of the, the acts that were in here, you know, since it was founded? Because I know there was some big TV show themes. A lot of the TV like themes from the 60s, like uh, I Dream of Genie, MASH, Hawaii Five-0, Adam's Family. Uh, Green Acres, Bonanza, Batman. Wow. When it kind of became the rock and roll room, a lot of the Chili Peppers records were done in here. System of a Down, Toxicity. Audio Slave. Audio, a lot of Audio Slave. Actually, I think all the Audio Slave records were cut in here. Yeah. Um, the last Slipknot record. That's right. Um, Muse, Slayer, Muse, Second Metallica. Law, and Absolution. Uh, Tom Petty, Wildflowers. Wow. Whitney Houston, I Will Always Love You. Stephen Wilson. Stephen Wilson, yes, Stephen actually. Stephen Wilson with Alan Parsons. Ghost BC even, I think you worked on that one. Oh yeah, that's right. So also we have a whole other amazing set of outboard gear. I mean, it's really ridiculous how much fantastic gear is in here, always on and always working. And always working. It's what we have here in each room where we decked out basically things that we need yep. for the type of work that generally gets done in there. So for a rock and roll session, you're going to be using a, a decent amount of compressors and some EQs. If you need any esoteric or other pieces of gear, we can get it because this is LA. And there's a bunch of cool stuff sitting up in the shop too. Mm -hmm. Fairchild in the wall. Nice addition. Definitely freed up some foot space from that oh, yeah. thing that used to sit oh, over yeah. there. So a lot of times what will happen when a big, like say Chili Peppers or, you know, when we did the thing with Greg Kohler, he brought in you know, the EMI console and mm -hmm. parked it right mm -hmm. here. And then he brought in a bunch of his own Fairchilds and- And then had a whole trees. rack of- The yeah, six tens. Pull the couch out. Yep. Yeah, that that's a very common move is there's just, we'll take the couch out and literally flood all of this with, with more stuff. gear. Yeah. It'd be a very hardworking AC I unit. need I need my own toys. Again, NS10s, ATCs up 300s. top. Mm -hmm. There's uh, a, a, actually a very nice and useful space behind each console in every room. I remember when Muse did Second Law, they set up like picnic tables back here with mm -hmm. all these huge modular synths mm -hmm. that just took up this whole entire area and then had extra guitars and stuff everywhere. All right, let's check out the live room. Awesome. Oh, actually, hold on. I want to point out this desk. I don't know if you can see it on camera. This table here, I want this so badly in my house. This is like the most sturdy standing sidecar desk ever. And I mean, you could stand on this and jump up and down probably. And then it's awesome because if you're done sitting for a minute, you can raise yeah. the desk and work standing. But yeah, this is an, a, a monster of it. You guys have these in a couple of the rooms. All, uh, one and two, yep. Anthro, there we go. Anthro technology 
anthro.com, not sponsored. This thing is awesome. Now this is one of the greatest live rooms. Yeah, it, yes, it absolutely is. For so many different reasons. And like I was saying in Studio One, you get a whole band in here playing together, and you have some we have some ISO booths in here, so you can have a guitar amp playing and a bass amp playing yeah. with the drums and the keys, and then maybe have the singer, you know, squirreled away in their closet. Yeah. And everybody's playing together, and the music is happening, and the conversation is happening so in good. real time, and there's the magic to that because maybe the drummer's on the front of the beat and just kind of driving this song, and the guitar player is responding to that, and the bass player is trying to keep the peace, and. Yeah, it's, it's so fun being able to be in there, even as an assistant. I mean, I get to watch some of the, just Great, the Some of the greatest coolest, players in the world. Coolest moments ever. When we did John Legend, it was Chris Dave here, who has a crazy drum setup, and it was Pino Palladino there. Mm, already. And they're just like, they're just locked in, looking right at each other, going for it. And uh, I did, we did Weezer in here, Jake Sinclair. Yep. He produced that and he was out in the room with them. They were all playing together. We had those three gobos. Rivers was doing vocals in the room while they played drums with his amps right next to him mm -hmm. in a doghouse, not even in the piano booth. And um, and I was running the tape machine alone in the control room, you know? <laughs> and this year they're starting to play and you're like, like, what is happening? This right is now? cool. This is Weezer, like playing basically just for me. Like only I am experiencing this, this is mm -hmm. so cool. But like moments like that literally happen every day here. And, mm -hmm. Well, and this, this space is magical. I mean, it's, it's so, uh, sound and acoustics is about the sound in a space. Yeah. So there's, you have to have a good sounding room as a, as a launching point. Yeah. With a room like this, and if you look around, you don't see two parallel surfaces. The treatment on the walls here, the angles, I love, this is one of my favorite designs is like the absorption with the diffusion in front of it. So you can see there's like multiple layers of just totally different styles of things happening here. And this treatment specifically is almost unique. It's in two and three, mm -hmm. where about waist height, and this one's a little higher, down is carpet. So you could put horn players down Probably here. Probably some pegboard behind that as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you could put horn players down here on carpet and it's, you got a close mic and it sounds relatively yeah. close and intimate, and then you can put some room mics up. And you still get the whole room. Yeah, and all it takes is a couple little baffles, and it's pretty amazingly yeah. isolated between the different players. The ceiling has this really cool, gosh, what would you call it, like a staggered slant? Yeah, it's, it's weird because no matter which side you look at it, it kind of gets bigger going away from you. Yeah. You stand on this side and it does that, and you stand on the other side and it does that, and I can't quite figure out how. It's just a great, you know, mishmash of different materials done in a, a fantastic way. And mm -hmm. amazingly, like the colors kind of go together too. Mm -hmm. um, drums, this is generally the drum spot. Mm -hmm. Everyone you can goes see by to, all the pock marks. Yep, so, yeah, exactly. So sometimes we'll put up risers and put the drums up on risers or we'll just rugs down here, drums facing this way. Wide rooms, close rooms. Sometimes I did one with Aaron Sterling where we put him in the booth, opened oh, yeah. up the doors, and uh, had some 440s out here. One of my, actually a project that I, I recorded uh, for Lizzie and the Triggerman, drums in there, piano there, acoustic guitar, upright bass in that ISO, and then horns all yeah. here. Oh man, horns sound so good. Oh, so good in here. There, there's also footage from Muse doing the second law when they did the horn section in here, the bump, 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 ba da da da, ba da da. And dude, that well, was... And hearing a lot of those players like Wayne Bergeron and, and, yeah. and Alan Kaplan and all of those guys. Also one of my favorite records, but the sound is just out of control yeah. on that, that album, if you guys haven't checked it out. The second law from Muse, it's so good. We have all of the cables stored right here, easy to get. And then our tie lines, are mobile. So they have these impenetrable connections here somehow to the that back held of, up. to the back of these little custom, I don't even know, floaters or whatever you want mm -hmm. to call them. So you don't have to have huge cable runs that people are gonna trip over exactly. going to the wall. So this is the piano booth and in here we have the Yamaha C7. 
which is nice bright piano. Really a great piano for this room, like for the rock stuff, for mm -hmm. the pop stuff. Cuts through it cuts. so, so well. And of course, every single room stacked with Atlas stands. You guys finally got some Lash Lakes. So the, the mic stands are an important part because that's your insurance policy for your microphone. Oh yeah. You don't want to skimp on the mic stand because you don't want your expensive mic. Funk. Yeah, which there are. Which now you have to fix. No shortage of here. Yeah. Also, when you're a runner and an assistant, more if you're a runner or an intern, you're gonna be in great shape because the mics are all stored upstairs. So every time you gotta get or put away a mic, you gotta run across the building up the stairs and we're constantly moving these stands yep. all around, shuffling around the room, mm -hmm. between rooms. You, you, you get to be functionally fit. I was 30 pounds lighter when I so went So was here. I. 